Let's look at some more examples of working with the String Builder. Here I've already put some code in here, I've added to it, just so we can get more into how it works without me sitting there typing. So a little bit more interesting that way, I suppose. We did our insert with our String Builder. We inserted this text there. We took a look at that. We'll take a look at it again. Now we're just doing a write to our String Builder. We'll write a new line there just so we don't have to worry about it. So we'll just write a new line to get some space. You see we have a remove, sp.remove. This is going to remove from the start index here, which is zero. The first element of all our strings are going to be zero. And then we're going to have a way to remove as many characters as we want from the left or wherever you start this. So if you start this at the end, like length minus four, for example, the length of the string minus four, that's going to be all the way over and four characters from the end of the string. sp.length is going to be the length. So let's look at the And we'll look at what we have here. We have our start index, and then we have the length of the string that we want to remove, the length of what we want to remove. So what I'll do is I'll keep that there, and we're going to actually remove everything. You could also just do an sp.length is equal to zero because you can assign the length, and we'll make that zero. So let's take a look at what we have. First, we'll take a look before we remove anything. And then you see it's all, it's all jumbled together. And also note that we have a capacity and a string size as well. I'll show you that. Note that it says 32. And our length here, this is our length. I say capacity, I didn't change it. I'll change that. That's 26. That's actually the length of the string. And 32 bytes are allocated for this. So that's going to dynamically make itself available to create and increase the size as we need to, lower the size as we need to as well. So what we'll do is we'll change this to length so we don't confuse anybody. And we will come back up and we'll say, all right, let's remove this. Let's do it that way. Build errors. Let's see what I did here. Sometimes I'm a little too fast for myself. We have a double paren there. That doesn't work. Don't use double parens. You'll get an error. Anyway, here we go. So we remove the string. Now we're stuck with hello world, a little bit more formal with the comma. There we go. Our string builder capacity is now 16. So it dynamically reallocated this capacity, how big it is, how much memory it takes up, to 16. So you can see it went from 16 to 32. So it's going in that computer math kind of thing. And then we can see our length is 13. So we still have three bytes there that it can fill up, three characters that we can put into this allocated area. And when we go over that, it's going to automatically make more space for us in memory. So that's what's beautiful about String Builder. It takes care of things. It's smart. And it's going to make us smarter, too. And it's going to give us a lot more time to hang out and do other things. Anyway, so that's one way to do it. Second way to do it is to make that length zero. Nice way to do it. Again, hello world, not that long, messy thing. 16, 13 would be the length, capacity 16. It dynamically fixed itself. So you can use either one, however you want to choose to do that. If we just add some spaces here, we added three. We'll rebuild. 16, 15 fits there. I guess I added two. So we'll do it again. 16, it's filled up. See, now if we add one more, 17, very important number there. Boom, it goes up to 32. So it allocates 16 more bytes there for us to work with. Nice and easy. And let's see what else. So that's working with String Builder. Very nice that we can actually append things. I didn't mention that. SP.append is going to append strings, append to our string, and it works in a nice and neat way. You can append as much as you like. 